Okay, so without any further ado, I just uh, really gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who's Dr. Emily Knowlton. Um, Emily uh, gained her PhD in infectious diseases and microbiology from the University of Pittsburgh under the direction of, of uh, Professor Charles Ronaldo, and she was identifying immune responses to lytic infection with human herpes virus 8. Uh, she then joined ProImmune in 2013 after completing her postdoc in Professor Ronaldo's lab. And she works uh, in the ProImmune team as our senior immunology sales specialist, providing innovative solutions for clients that radically improve our understanding of both desired and unwanted immune responses. And she adds uh, enthusiastically, or uh, specifically, that she is now a Zoom enthusiast as well, which I'm sure we've all become Zoom enthusiasts after the last six months. So over to you, Emily. Thank you. Put that on my CV now. OK, well, thank you uh, for that introduction, Jeremy. So one of the major ways to assess the efficacy of vaccines and immunotherapies is to monitor functional and antigen specific T cell responses. How you track those T cell responses and what you're measuring those responses against will be determined by a number of factors specific to your study. So some groups will look at well-defined HLA restricted immunodominant epitopes from multiple antigens to fully characterize the T cell response while others may use a large overlapping peptide library from a single antigen to designate a negative or positive response to their treatment. Each approach will be unique to the trial and should be tailored to answer the questions relevant to that study. Now, there are several different types of immune monitoring tools that are available, so it's very important to choose a robust assay that will provide the best measure of immune reactivity and ultimately help to determine correlations between the treatment and clinical outcome. So I'm gonna be describing two technologies that allow you to look at both function and frequency of CD8 and CD4 T cells. And those include our interferon gamma pro-spot T cell LA spot assay and our multimer technology consisting of our pro-5 MHC class one pentamers and pro T2 MHC class two tetramers. And I'll be providing some case study examples of how they've been used to monitor immune responses in both gene therapy and immune oncology programs. And then throughout the rest of this afternoon sessions, we'll actually hear how some other groups use these same technologies to track viral and cancer uh, specific responses. So T cell LA spots are a very popular immune monitoring tool, both preclinically and in clinical trials. And they've essentially become the assay standard for measuring T cell responses and validating T cell epitopes. And that's because they're very robust, they're highly reproducible, and they're quite sensitive. So in this assay, PBMCs are incubated overnight with an antigen, and the population of cells that recognize that antigen will secrete interferon gamma. And that's captured in this assay using a biotinylated anti-interferon gamma antibody, and then visualized using a secondary colometric step. So each interferon gamma producing cell will appear as a spot in the plate. Now with an experienced LA spot handler, you can detect uh, responses as low as one cell in every 100,000, given that the background is low. And this can be extremely important in some diseases where the precursor frequency of effector memory cells is very rare. We use whole PBMCs in this assay, which allow us to capture both CD8 and CD4 T cell responses, but we can look at those populations individually uh, if they're further purified and we use the appropriate length peptide, whether that's a nine or uh, 15 mer. These are cryopreserved PBMCs and they're plated at 250,000 cells per well. We run each, um, each condition in triplicate, so it can be a cell intensive assay based on the number of antigens that you include. The antigens for simulation can be individual peptides, uh, peptide libraries or pools, or even whole protein. We also run uh, three controls, uh, including two positive controls, which are PHA, and then our ProMix CEF peptide pool, which contains immunodominant epitopes from CMV, EBV, and influenza. And then our negative control is uh, media only. Now, one of the um, most important aspects of an LA spot is just how critical the cell, or how um, um, the quality of the cells themselves. It's extremely important that the uh, blood is processed in a timely manner following um, its draw, and then a robust cryopreservation technique is used. And I'm going to be talking about that in a little more detail in just a moment. So we've been offering the LA spot assay for many years now, and the expertise that we provide will assist from the very early planning stages all the way up until data reporting and discussion. And really, um, one of the first steps in planning um, for a successful LA spot is actually understanding the limitations of your own study 
and what you'll be able to do with the samples that you're obtaining. So for example, if you are planning to draw a very low volume of blood from um, your patient cohort, then this will result in a low cell yield, which will ultimately lim limit the number of antigens that you can evaluate in this assay. So Promune will work closely with you to help determine the study layout, the number of antigens that we can test, and then the number of cells that we need from each donor. And then once that antigen source has been determined, we can provide the peptide synthesis for you. And we have experience providing large peptide libraries for an, from a number of different antigen sources, uh, whether that's virally de derived or uh, cancer antigens, also the um, viral vector like AAV, the transgene, or even the CAR-T construct. And we'll carefully plan the amount of peptide required to run the full scope of the study and then determine an aliquoting strategy that is appropriate for the frequency of the batches that we'll be testing. Now, once the peptides are synthesized, we can provide some additional optimization studies. And in some instances, it may also be possible to identify a positive control donor that can be used in those qualification studies and then alongside your clinical samples. So one great example of um, when this can be done is for gene therapy studies, where a viral vector is used because a portion of the general healthy population may have a response against that virus. So to identify a con positive control donor, we would use our ProMune PBMC Biobank, which is what Jeremy described earlier before lunch. Uh, for those of you who may not have been logged on, these are PBMCs collected from healthy individuals in the UK. Uh, they're fully um, HLA typed, and then the cells are cryopreserved. So we'll select a panel of donors to run in an LE spot assay against the desired antigen. And if there are any that have positive responses, then those cells can be reserved for uh, future use. So this is an example of uh, where we have done that for a gene therapy program. We identified a positive response donor, and then those cells were incorporated into the subsequent runs alongside the clinical samples. So what you see here are the data for that donor over 10 different runs. Um, the response against the media only or the negative control is, uh, is quite low. Um, it's actually in, being shown by a green bar, which does not even show up on this scale. We do see consistent responses as well to the PHA, which is the blue bar, and then also the antigen peptide pool of interest, which is the red. So having a control donor not only helps to determine the level of positivity of your clinical samples, but also ensures that the assay is behaving as it should. Uh, which can be very helpful if there are any issues with how the clinical samples perform in that assay. So there are multiple qualification setups that we can perform and several aspects of an LA spot that we can optimize for your particular study and those are listed here. Uh, clinical trials happen all over the world and that's true for the collection of the blood as well. Uh, oftentimes there are multiple sites in which the blood is being drawn and that may not even be where the cells are being processed. So uh, PROMU will work closely with those collections and processing sites to establish a cohesive protocol uh, because even the tiniest of detail can make a, uh, a major difference, whether that's a centrifugation step or even the, the tube uh, type that's being used. And once those protocols are established, processing sites can process samples from healthy donors and then send those to us as a dry run so we can evaluate the viability and the functionality of those cells uh, in the LA spot. This will also allow us to look at uh, the cryopreservation of those cells as well as the processing and even the shipping. So all things that you would wanna have in line prior to obtaining that first uh, patient sample. So in instances where the number of cells that you have to work with is extremely limited, we would also suggest doing a cell limiting study to determine the optimal cell plating range. So as I mentioned, we typically plate 250,000 cells per well. Uh, but we can look at uh, using fewer cells to see how low we can go and still see a response against the desired antigen. And this may help to really uh, stretch out uh, those cells if need be. We will also determine a sample analysis plan and prioritization schedule so that when our lab scientists are following your clinical samples, if there aren't enough to run the full scope of the study, then they can follow that pre-agreed um, plan and then eliminate necessary parts of the study whether that's a positive control or a reduction in the replicates or even reducing the number of uh, cells plated. And then finally, another option that we offer is an inter and intra assay variability qualification assay where we would um, do multiple LA spot setups with your specific uh, study antigen. 
And this is an example of where we have done that in-house. Uh, we evaluated two different LA spot handlers over three days for a total of six individual LA spots. Uh, so shown here on the far left are the responses against the unstimulated control. So again, we do routinely see very low background levels, um, less than 20 spot forming cells per million. Uh, we also see consistent uh, responses against the positive control and the two test peptides for these six individual LA spot runs. Uh, so this report is available and we would also encourage you to uh, run this with your own specific uh, study antigen. And again, we have done this for groups that we are working with uh, in their clinical trials. Okay, so the immune monitoring portion of your trial is very important and can really make or break the study or at least the interpretation of the data. Uh, so it's essential that all of these aspects are considered and optimized to best support your program. And that's where we can really help and offer our expertise. So once these preliminary work are complete, then you can feel confident that the patient samples will be utilized appropriately and that the data set that's generated is reliable. Uh, so we are experienced in handling both preclinical and clinical samples, including the receipt and storage, as well as, uh, of course, the analysis and the reporting. So we've worked on small scale preclinical studies, as well as phase one and phase two, looking at multiple types of antigens that I have listed here. Uh, but we also have the capacity to support large scale, multi-sample phase three trials as well. And one example of that is the phase three work that we are providing for Celgene for their CAR-T platform. Uh, there's a really great talk given by Priya Sri Raman on our website. Uh, this is from our Mastering Immunity Conference a couple of years ago, uh, where she talks through many of these considerations in setting up the LA spot with us uh, for this stage of their uh, study. Here we have an example of a phase one two-way clinical trial with the German Cancer Center and Oryx where we used a T-cell LA spot to look at responses against PARV or X01, a treatment for glioblastoma multiform. This treatment utilized an oncolytic H1PV rodent proto-parvovirus. Now, oncolytic viruses are a very promising immunotherapy that help to turn on the immune system by selectively replicating in cancer cells, uh, which induces specific anti-tumor immunity. And this rodent virus is actually non-pathogenic in humans. It's quite small and highly oncoselective. As for the patient population in this study, uh, there's unfortunately a very poor prognosis for those diagnosed with glioblastoma multiform. Uh, around 50% of patients will die within the first 12 to 16 months. Uh, so these individuals were quite sick and the number of cells available to the clinicians uh, were extremely limited. So we developed a two-step plan to best preserve and utilize those clinical samples. Uh, we first identified epitopes from both the parvovirus and the tumor using parvovirus-infected glioblastoma cell lines that had been matched to the patient's HLA type. And we did this using the ProPresent antigen presentation assay that Jeremy described earlier. This resulted in five epitopes from two parvovirus proteins and 20 epitopes from 18 different glioma proteins. Next, as a part of step two, we synthesize the peptides identified by ProPresent, uh, along with literature-defined sequences, and created four unique peptide pools, two from glioma and two from the virus. And then those four pools were used to monitor the immune responses both pre and post PARV or X01 treatment in an LE spot. And the data for two different patients are shown here. Uh, in panel A, we see significant uh, responses to PHA control, which are shown by the white bars, at each of the time points. Uh, there are also significant responses to all four of the peptide pools at day 61. And again, three of these four pools contain novel sequences identified uh, by the ProPresent assay. In panel B, there were significant responses to the PHA and CEF controls at all time points also significant responses to the peptide pools at day 18, and then sustained responses against the virus at both day 57 and then all the way out to day 120. So this is a really great example of how effective the LA spot technology can be at measuring patient responses. The second technology I would like to go over are our multimers. So here's a picture of our Pro5 MHC class one pentamers to detect antigen specific CD8 T cells. Um, it has a pentameric structure, of course, with five MHC peptide complexes that bind to the TCR on a CD8 T cell. And it has five fluorescent tags, which allows for enumeration by uh, flow cytometry. And then a unique coiled-coiled domain configuration. 
And with this configuration, we can offer them with a PC or a PE floor tag or unique to the Pentamers, biotin, which gives you the added flexibility uh, within your staining panel as you can use essentially any color you choose conjugated to strip avidin. Uh, also unique to the Pentamers are the option for an unlabeled reagent, which allows you to freeze them down and extend their shelf life. So this means you can buy large uh, quantities of Pentamer in bulk from the same batch so that you can QC once on receipt, aliquot them, and then freeze them down. So you can imagine if you're using these to stain in your clinical trial, the ability uh, for long-term storage with minimal use of samples for QC, uh, it's, a, it's a huge plus. There are also um, 450 catalog items available and more, of two, um, more than 200 of those are cancer spe uh, specific, so relevant to today's talk. Uh, we're constantly adding to this catalog, but if the epitope is not available as a catalog item, then we can synthesize a custom pentamer for you, which takes about four to six weeks. And then what I think speaks most to the consistency of these reagents are the number of scientific publications that we have. Uh, there are more than 1600 publications citing the pentamer technology. And we actually like to offer a free bottle of champagne uh, with each publication. So that's a lot of bubbly. Now with that many publications, uh, you can find examples of multiple applications for the pentamers at various stages of research. As a part of my doctoral work at Pitt, um, my lab used the pentamers in combination with intracellular cytokine staining to look at multifunctional antigen specific CD8s in individuals with Kaposi sarcoma. Uh, Marcus Butler's group out of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, uh, they use pentamers to track cancer specific T cells following infusion of MART1 CD8s uh, that they had isolated and expanded using their artificial antigen presentation system. And then Bruce Glazer's groups out of the University of Minnesota, they actually used the pentamers to detect allo-specific B cells in, uh, in situ by immunohistochemistry. So in addition to being um, extremely consistent reagents, they're also quite versatile as well. So this next case study comes from the Wakayama Medical University in Japan, where they use the pentamers to monitor the patient cancer-specific CD8s in a phase one trial in response to a peptide-based um, vaccines. So patients with advanced or metastatic esophageal carcinoma and squamous cell uh, carcinoma were enrolled in the study. And over a five-week cycle, patients received a vaccine with peptide epitopes derived from the novel cancer testes antigen LY6K and TTK. And that was in combination with CPG7909. So all but two of the patients had increases in LY6K uh, specific CD8 T cells um, um, in post-vaccination compared to pre-vaccination, as well as compared to the irrelevant antigen, which um, they used was uh, HIV. There were also um, slight increases in the TTK567 uh, specific CD8s as well. So they were able to successfully elicit cancer specific CD8 T cell responses in patients uh, with these advanced esophageal carcinomas against their peptide vaccines. Okay, so for monitoring CD4 T cell responses, uh, we have our class two tetramers, and these are also available with APC and PE um, in 50 and 150 test size quantities. We have 134 different catalog specificities, um, several of which um, are also cancer, as you can see by these different cancer antigens. Um, but just like the pentamers, we can also do custom synthesis, and we have that available for nine different class two alleles for human and three for mice. So here's some example um, below with some nice bright staining out of Professor Lauer's group from MassGen, and I suspect you're going to be hearing more about this during uh, the last talk today by Dr. Barch, so um, please be sure to stick around for that as well. Okay, so um, to have successful uh, epitope and, uh, and, and immune monitoring programs really require a detailed and efficient characterization of antigen specific and um, uh, anti-tumor epitopes or any type of epitope depending on your program. And it's uh, important to have access to a wide range of these specialist assays and tools to enable appropriate decision uh, making. And then generation of the type of data that I shared with you today will uh, help to differentiate your biologic or your vaccine or your immunotherapy from the competitors. And we do offer these reagents and services as an integrated platform, uh, which ultimately saves you time and money because you can best select the assay or reagent that uh, will answer the questions that you're asking. And um, below here are, are multiple different molecules that we've worked with to date. 
So with that, I would be happy to take any questions. Thanks. Great, thank you, Emily. That's super. So while that's come up, Emily, just a quick question for you. So in relation to uh, the Ellispot uh, analysis that you were talking uh, about, you, you guess or mentioned or touched on some of the challenges with um, cell samples, uh, you know, and working with that and making a successful outcome. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm, I'm aware of some of those some of those issues. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that and, and what can be done to sort of improve the chances of success there? Um, yeah, so yeah, we've, we've definitely run into some challenges with the quality of cells. Um, oftentimes, you know, we, we do know the, the viability of the cells as they're coming into us um, because that's what the, the processing center has uh, you know, kept track of, kept track of, and provided to us. Um, but then, when we actually get the cells in hand and we go to use them, sometimes um, they're functionally inept, uh, even though they might have high viability. So, at that at that point, um, you know, we we go through a, a whole list of things that that uh, could be problematic, whether that is a step in the cryopreservation technique, um, or even you know before that in the processing aspect, uh, and then we try to work with the the centers that are doing those. Uh, so they can make changes uh, to their SOPs if necessary, uh, and really, I guess, hone in in all those different aspects. Um, again, even even something so small as a, a tube type that they could evaluate, or the amount of time that they allow between um, centrifugations. Yeah, and then um, thank you. The other thing I was just thinking about was uh, in relation to the multimers. Um, yeah. Can you sort of just explain a little bit more about um, the options for custom synthesis if somebody's interested in? an epitope that uh, maybe isn't listed in our catalog? Yeah, I mean, for the custom synthesis, you would just need to provide us with uh, your sequence and the allele. And then what we do is uh, have a look at that. We look at the, um, you know, the anchor residues to see if they fit what is, you know, a predicted anchor for that specific allele. Um, uh, we also use the Pythi and look at the, the scoring system for that. Um, and just our general um, experience with making class one pentamers. We, we know sometimes what may work and what may not, so we can certainly make recommendations on that. And then once you provide um, the sequence and the allele information, we will actually make the peptide um, for, the, for the pentamer for you. So it's just, uh, it's just all email communication and then you get a nice pentamer in the mail. Great, thank you very much.